for live. Silicon Angles continuous coverage of VMworld Live at uh, VMworld 2010. And uh, we're covering it wall to wall, blanket coverage. And we have the CEO of NetApp, Tom Georgians. Welcome to the uh, live coverage. I know you're super busy with Dave Vellante, co host. So uh, uh, tell us about what's, uh, what's your feeling about the show and uh, uh, what do you think? I mean, the keynote was pretty hot, and you guys fit perfectly into that. We heard from Christine, uh, your CMO. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, I think um, just the attendance at the show is remarkable. I think there seems to be a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. And it's pretty clear that virtualization is making a big impact on the data center. And frankly, it's making a big impact on our business as well. Uh, VMware has been a great partner for us. The evolu evolution of virtualization, uh, both in terms of cost savings and ultimately as the evolution towards the private cloud. And that's clearly where we've been winning in the market, and it's a big part of our strategy, and it's great to be a partner of VMware. Storage storage has been uh, very sexy for uh, a few months now, and all the M&A activity obviously is on, in, in the press. You buy but that, Tom? Storage <laughs> is sexy? Yeah, so can we get you to take the bait on that? Or? How about storage is hot? It's hot, okay, hey. Sizzle, it's sizzling hot. As long as storage is profitable and growing, yeah. that's good enough for me. I'll leave sexy uh, for yeah. the marketing people. As, as we were reporting on Silicon Angle, storage is the linchpin, it's that, it's that foundation, and Christine mentioned it. it's not just tactical, it's foundation. And you're mm -hmm. seeing that in the announcement that storage is a key component of overall cloud and the architecture. Talk about uh, you know, what your view is on that and, and what's next, and the M&A is, is really bringing a lot of spotlight in the mainstream on this, and so what's your, what's your angle on that? Well, I, I think the M&A angle is, um, is less about the cloud, it's more about portfolios of individual companies. But I think the broader story around the cloud is that it fundamentally changes the economics, the velocity, the agility of the data center. And I think one thing about NetApp is that we recognized early on is that virtualization is only about the servers. That virtualization has huge implications for storage. Uh, we moved a tremendous amount of our resource about five years ago in that direction to basically optimize our product for the, the ultimate evolution of the data center. And I think that's why we've been very well positioned. Uh, we have a story about how we can cut the cost of your infrastructure in half. We have a story about how you can provision it in seconds. We have a story about how we can allow businesses to basically create competitive advantage through the choices of a storage infrastructure. So you may have just answered it, but I want to go a little deeper. How is it that you're able to grow so much faster than the industry? Let's, let's say the industry's growing at you know, single digits, maybe high single digits, maybe low, depending on what quarter it is. How is it that NetApp is able to grow at 30% and, and can that continue? Well, I think the, uh, the question of 30% obviously has a big impact on what is the macro going to do? And you know, I tell our team, business is good, but the headlines are unrelentingly negative. So our focus is actually, believe it or not, not on growing 30%. Our focus is on gaining share. And our view is that we want to continue to gain a point, a point and a half a share every year. And a point and a half a share has no context. It's the same where the market is up or the market is down. So rather than picking a specific dollar target, we're going to focus on share gain. And frankly, NetApp has actually gained more share in the last year, or we're gaining at a faster rate than at any time since before the bubble burst more than 10 years ago. Which is unbelievable. I, I mean, I, I see the IDC numbers too. Let's assume they're, they're, they're reasonable. <laughs> I think IDC does as well as anybody. And, and so if you can keep gaining that share, that's how you grow. That's the mm -hmm. philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's pretty fascinating. But so that's how you're going to make it continue. Okay, I get that. But let's talk a little bit about um, another thing that we've talked about in the past uh, together, which is best of breeder integrated stacks. I know where you sit, but share with our audience. Can you sort of set that up and talk about NetApp strategy there? Well, uh, kind of the classic question is, are we ultimately going to see the major full line suppliers, the HPs or the IBMs, basically assemble a complete stack of uh, technologies so that they can offer an end-to-end -end solution with professional services to the customer? And we've certainly heard a lot that that's evidently going to be the way the company is going to go, particularly as IT budgets are compressed over time. And while I certainly understand the intellectual allure of that argument, um, probably I have two data points. Number one is if you look at over the last two years, the actual market share of the server vendors and storage is actually declining and declining at a double digit rate. So if that is going to be the prevailing model, it's going to require a change in trajectory that we're not seeing today. And the other thing, frankly, I believe that what customers know that they gain with them in terms of integration, they know that they're giving up in best of breed, they know they're giving up in cost. And I think that it's incumbent upon NetApp to basically partner closely, like the work we did with VMware and Cisco around secure multi-tenancy, to basically lower the integration burden of the end user, yet still have them have best of breed solutions. And I think if we can approximate, either through partnerships with systems integrators or direct industry collaboration with other players in the industry, 
and basically deliver to end users a very, very tightly integrated solution that's as integrated or nearly as integrated as HP or IBM, yet is still best of breed and is still have compelling cost, then I think we're going to continue to succeed in the market. And I don't believe the integrated solution is actually going to prevail. And it's certainly not prevailing today. Yeah, I was going to say, the near-term trends certainly bear out your premise. And, mm -hmm. um, and Dave Scott, as you know, is also very vocal about that. Um, you know, you're seeing just an incredible action you know, with 3PAR. Any comments there? What do you think, that, what does it mean to NetApp, the, the whole 3PAR HP Dell thing? I, you know, I think 3PAR is about HP and Dell. And you know, for NetApp, I don't think we have an opinion. Uh, 3PAR was a player in the market, they'll remain a player in the market. I think this is a more reflection of what Dell or HP believe is the strength of their current roadmap, their current partnerships, and what they see on the horizon of what they've got on the drawing boards coming forward. And whatever it is that they see in their future, they must believe that 3PAR is a better option because they're paying a lot of money for it. Yeah, and you're, it's interesting, your, your comment was it's really not about cloud, it's about filling in gaps in the portfolio. Absolutely, <laughs> I don't think that this is part and parcel of some cloud strategy. I think it's just a straight portfolio gap that they're trying to fill. Um, I, I think that they have a need there, both of them, and uh, both competing for the same asset, and that's driving up a high price. And, you know, <laughs> well, you've been you there. Know, it's, it's, been a long, it's, been a, it's been a long road for 3PAR, but certainly the last week has been good for their shareholders. So I say, you've been there, right? And I saw you guys recently made an announcement with, I think it was Sync Sort. You had some backup stuff, and it didn't cost you $2 billion to, to get that capability. It looked very data domain-like. That, was that a correct interpretation? Or? Well, I, I think that goes back to our original point, and that is, um, depending on users to integrate on their own a whole bunch of point products mm. is not a realistic value proposition. So for us, it's incumbent upon us to find best of breed providers in the industry that we can integrate with and we can ultimately create full solutions. So SyncSort is just one example. Um, they've been a good partner for us, but there are many others. We do interesting work with BMC. We do interesting work with Microsoft. We do interesting work with a lot of other players. And the ultimate goal is to approximate the integration capability of HP and IBM, yet still deliver best of breed, which they can't do. Uh, so do you feel like you've got processes that allow you to, to be you know, superb at, at, at partnering or even superior? Well... Or is that a cultural thing? Oh, I, I, I absolutely believe it's a cultural thing. And, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, why is NetApp gaining so much share? Why is NetApp outgrowing the market? And most of that dialogue focuses on technological innovation and product. But I would contend that NetApp has probably the broadest go-to-market strategy of any of our competitors, whether it be our direct focus, our, 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 our distributors, which did over a billion dollars with us mm -hmm. in North America, the relationships we're building with systems integrators, we actually have OEMs with HP and IBM, and obviously the service providers, some of the highest profile and certainly the largest service providers in the world are NetApp customers. So for us, I think a big part of our strategy going forward and a big part of our growth is the fact that I think we have the most diversified and most well-balanced go-to-market strategy of any company in this industry. Uh, Tom, Tom, I want to talk about uh, some of the mainstream uh, media analysis of the whole 3PAR, M&A storage uh, uh, sizzling messaging. They're talking about it as M&A as um, they have flush with cash, the financial crisis, and they have all the stockpiled cash. They're also talking about the lack of innovation coming from the big players. And so, uh, you know, I think they're getting that wrong. I mean, I'm seeing innovation, but the, the question to you is, what innovation do you have coming out of NetApp, and are two big guys not having the innovation? Well, you know, I think from an innovation perspective, clearly innovation is why companies like us survive. If, if NetApp isn't an industry leader and we don't have differentiation, there's no reason for a company like us to exist. Um, everything we sell is available, you know, hopefully not as good from other people. So clearly we need to have some relevant differentiation that matters. You know, as far as, um, you know, as far as 3PAR and, 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 and the big vendors, I think the big problem with the big vendors and why I think the fallacy of the big vendors like HP and IBM are going to consolidate all of this intellectual property in one place is the fact that it's impossible for them to make the investment levels to be competitive at every level of the stack at the exact same time. Nobody has that much R&D. And you know, look at over time, the companies that have created value over time have not been the, the people that have got end-to-end -end stacks. It's been the Microsofts and the Intels and the Oracles and the Cisco's. It's been the horizontal players. So maybe the world is different now. Maybe the growth rate of the overall industry is different. But I don't believe it's realistic that any company can invest and be best of breed at every layer of the stack. And I think even if there's a desire to consolidate this industry, it's just a matter of time before a bunch of horizontal experts reemerge. 
So talk a little bit about your relationship with VMware, obviously very important. Um, do you feel like the deck is stacked uh, for EMC? And can you, can, I know you're going to say no, but, but talk a little bit about that and why that's the case and how you're able to become so relevant to, to the market and to customers. Well, the model with VMware, I think, is really a simple one. Um, not, not simple from a technology perspective, but the motivation is easy. And that is, they've got a vision of the industry in terms of virtualization that's very similar to our industry on storage. Mm -hmm. And integrated together, we were able to tell a story to customers that enabled the combined solution to do things that no other combination of products could do and create an economic environment for customers to make a choice that they would not have made with VMware alone or NetApp alone. So it's no more complicated than this deal was formed in the field by creating solutions in front of customers. And you know, at the end of the day, I think that's it. Particularly as we went through this downturn, I think the economic message of server utilization enabled by virtualization and storage utilization enabled by NetApp combined was really compelling. And even in the downturn, we saw companies that had very little money to spend still investing in this because the payback was so significant and it was so sh near term. As far as the broader context of EMC, whether it's, whether it's a tribute to EMC or a tribute to VMware leadership, the simple fact of the matter is they've been independent. And I think now we've created such powerful customer solutions, and I think VMware's market cap is a percentage of EMC's, I think any intervention into, into VMware's business by EMC would sub-optimize either customer outcomes or shareholder outcomes, and I don't think that's <laughs> in anybody's best interest. So right now, we consider VMware a partner I, obviously, they partner with EMC, but the EMC ownership is not something we spend any time thinking about. Right, good. So, so put on your crystal ball a little bit. I mean, what do you see uh, for the future of the industry? Um, you're talking about uh, efficiency. Do you think the industry, the storage, you've been in the storage industry a, a while, right? With storage tech, LSI, and others. Do you see the, the, the conversation shifting from IT as just a, a, a cost cost-cutting mechanism to add value to one of, of more deeper business integration. Is that possible or is that just a pipe dream? Um, no, it has to be more than a pipe dream. In fact, in fact, that is probably the most interesting conversation that we're having now is companies, ourselves included, are so dependent upon the systems that we run that every major transformation initiative that we have, whether it be, whether it be a pricing initiative, whether it be integration with our partners, integration with our suppliers, everything that we do is a system component. So if we're trying to drive velocity and we're trying to drive agility and we're trying to drive transformation in our company, IT is basically integral to all of that. And there isn't anywhere I go that I don't have a conversation with, cut with CIOs where they talk about that they feel like they are the gating item of all major business transformation. And that's true of NetApp as well. So the ability of IT to be not only reliable, I think that is interesting, but it's no longer sufficient. IT needs to be cost effective and it needs to be agile because an IT organization that is not agile, that is the longest pole in the tent of all business transformation, is going to ultimately impact the competitiveness of the overall firm. And that's the dialogue that we have. And I see there's all sorts of manifestations. I'm seeing non-IT professionals now in charge of, now CIOs of corporations. And this agility language is become embedded in the vernacular to a degree that I've never seen it before. And I'm pushing the same thing in my company. We moved IT out of the CFO function and we moved it into the business transformation function because mm -hmm. every major transformation in the company has a big IT component. And I think that's fundamentally changed the priorities and the focus of IT and I see that everywhere we go. And I think the component of NetApp here is how do we enable that CIO vision? How do we make it cost effective? How do we make their virtualization initiatives and their ultimate internal cloud march be successful and lower their risk and accelerate their time to deployment so they can achieve these compelling business outcomes? So storage in and of itself is not interesting or sexy, but I think the things that we enable absolutely are. And I think what we're enabling is the fundamental competitiveness of the firms that we partner with. And I think that story, and more importantly, delivering on that story, is why we're growing and the competition isn't. NetApp walking the walk within its own internal IT. We, that's great, great proof point. We've been looking for proof points all week. Uh, Tom Georgian, CEO of NetApp. Great story. It, it, it's a great time to be <laughs> at NetApp at the helm. I know you're not complacent. You're doing a great job, and uh, really appreciate you coming on the Cube. Thank you very much, Dave. Right. We'll be right back for SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of the Cube at VMworld Live 2010. Tom Georgian, CEO of NetApp. Thank you. Thank you.